Hallelujah. 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 Send the fire today. Hallelujah. You may go, may be seated. We'd like to welcome those on uh, Facebook and YouTube and send the fire. That's what it's about. I, I love the worship. Thank you, Mike, and everybody at worship, because it's about putting God first. That's what makes all the difference. Uh, I'm going to go to John 4, and I'm read out the Amplified Version. Very familiar story, the woman at the well. But it, it tells so much here. <clears throat> and one thing I, I look at here, uh, and this is going to be referring to Jesus, uh, and it was, says in verse 4, John 4, verse 4, it was necessary for him to go through Samaria. That means a lot, right? It was necessary that he come to your house. It was necessary that he went to your address. He is necessary. When I was a boy, he came to Carter Lane, 2415 Carter Lane. That's where I lived at. It was necessary. He had a reason to come to your house. He has a reason for your life. Let's take a look at that. Hallelujah. And in doing so, he arrived at a Samaritan town called Sychar, near the tract of land that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. In a, in a, I, I like to look up words because it's interesting to know that the <clears throat> Sychar, the town, refers to end. That's what it refers to end. And I thought, wow, isn't that good? Because that tells me something's going to change. We come up to the end. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. They attract the land that Jacob gave to his son Jacob. Jacob's well was there. So Jesus, tired as he was from his journey, sat down to rest by the well. It was then about six hours, about noon. Isn't it interesting? God has a timing already out. He knows where to be at at any given time. Hallelujah. Because what if he would stop there at 10 o'clock instead of noon? What if he stopped at 2 o'clock in the afternoon? She might not have been there, but he stopped right at noon. Hallelujah. Oh, God knows where you are. He knows how to reach your life. Hallelujah. And I love what it says. Presently, when a woman of Samaria came along to draw water, Jesus said to her, give me a drink. The Jews didn't have nothing to do with Samaria. They would actually go around the city rather than go through it. But Jesus talks to her. And Jewish men, did, basically, they just talked to their own wives or, or family. They didn't talk to women they did not know. But I like how Jesus, Jesus always puts an end to all those stereotypes. He puts an end to all that backward thinking. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he said to her, give me a drink. And a Samaritan woman, sometimes our old attitudes, maybe what we've been raised with, and all these different things come into play. And I like what he said. Oh, how, when a woman, a Samaritan came along to, to, to uh, uh, draw water, Jesus said to her, give me a drink, for his disciples had gone off in the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, how is that you, being a Jew, ask me? Hallelujah. For the Jews have nothing to do with the Samaritans. You know, you're, you're missing something here. We don't have nothing to do with them. You're talking to me. No, you don't need to talk to me. Oh, Hallelujah. Oh, I love how Jesus de-escalates the issue. You know, some people get defensive when we say it like that. But Jesus like this de-escalate. Let's, let's calm it down. Jesus answered her, if you had only known and recognized God's gift, hallelujah, <clears throat> who this is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him instead, he would have given you living water. He would give you something more. See, because you're going to keep drawing out of the well. You're going to come back and back and back. But I'm going to give you something that's going to last forever. I'm going to give you something that's going to change your life. Hallelujah. And she said to him, Sir, wait a minute. You have nothing to draw with. No drawing bucket and the well is deep. How then can you provide living water? Where do you get your living water? Are you greater than our superior, our ancestor Jacob, who gave us this well, who used to drink from it himself and his sons and his cattle? Jesus answered her, all who drink of this water will be thirsty again. But whosoever takes a drink of the water that I will give him shall never, no, never be thirsty anymore. But the water that I will give him shall become a spring of water welling up, flowing bubbly continually within him into for eternal life. There's going to be a change. You'll keep drawing, but I'm going to give you something that will last forever. How do we know one thing about Jesus is the only way to get satisfied? You know, because I tell you what, you know, you, you look at the magazines and, 
and, and people worth billions of dollars, you know, and all this other stuff. But it's funny, they're still not happy. You may be able to go buy anything you want, but one day you're going to have to meet your maker. So it doesn't make any difference, you know. I mean, I, I look at, we, we was watching some of the Real Housewife shows, you know, and, and I call them cartoons. That's what I call them, you know. <laughs> got some of that stuff. Like, and, and, and an individual, and it's up to her, they got the money, bought a $95,000 purse. $95,000 purse. Now I'm looking at that for $95,000. And I'm thinking, you know, I, I mean, I, I haven't had that kind of money, you know. feel bad spending, you know, a dollar for a hot dog. I mean, but, you know, they spent $95,000. And I'm thinking, now, you know, they can do what they want with their money, but how many people could you have fed for $95,000? Yeah. You know? How many people could you house, you know, for a week or so till they get their life together? How many times you could use that money for positive things? I mean, a person can only look at it so often and show it off so often, right? But I, I, but I look at all this, you know, and I'm thinking something's wrong here. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. The woman said to him, sir, give me this water. There's a change taking place How, so that I may never get thirsty nor have to come continually all the way here to draw. She's not quite there yet because she's still thinking you're going to have to physically draw it. Oh, and Jesus, he likes to bring it. So I love the way Jesus said because he's bringing it to, there's an issue here. Why does she come out at noon? Because most people would not draw water at noon. They come in the early part of the day or even, right? And she's all by herself. So she don't want people to see, you know, that she's out there at the well by herself. And, and I like what he says. She's thinking in verse 15, give me this water. So I don't have to come to draw. At this, she said to her, go and call your husband and come back here. And he has a way to pinpoint what's going on in her life. He could talk about other things, but right now we're pinpoint. You see, see, I'm, I'm concerned about your soul. That's what I'm concerned about, Jesus said. The woman answered, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you have spoken truly in saying, I have no husband. So you're honest. She's being honest. For you have had five husbands, and the man you are now living with is not your husband. In this you have spoken truly. Now, she, you know, she's listening to this. You're right, I have no husband now, because she's living with somebody. But I've had five husbands. Boy, he pinpointed it. He pinpointed it. How would he have known that if he wasn't Jesus? How would he have known that? Uh, the woman, sir, and the woman said to him, sir, I see and understand that you are a prophet. To be able to pick that out. Our forefathers worshiped on this mountain, but you Jews say that Jerusalem is the place where it's necessary and proper to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither merely in this mountain nor merely in Jerusalem. Verse 22, You Samaritans do not know what you are worshiping. You worship what you do not comprehend. We do know that we, what we are worshiping, we worship that we have knowledge of, of and understand. For after all, salvation comes from among the Jews. And I'll keep that in time. Now, verse 23, this is the key. A time will come, however, indeed, it's already here. Okay? We got it now. I'm, I'm breaking it down. I like what he said. Right now, it's already here. Do you understand it here? Salvation came through Jesus Christ. When the true, genuine worshipers will worship the Spirit, the Father in spirit and in truth, in reality. For the Father is seeking just such as people as these as his worshipers. He's, he's seeking those who worship him in spirit and in truth. That he seeketh stuff. God wants people to come to him and worship. He is worthy of it. Think where he brought you from. Think about where you came from. Think about all the trials you've been through and how God never gave up on you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, hallelujah, folks. Yeah, hand clap. That's what it's all about. You never want to forget where you came from. Always remember that. You know, sometimes, you know, you can get so far removed from where you came from, you know, kind of, as they say, I don't like talking cliche, but some people get on a high horse. You know, they realize they got, I remember some person telling me, he says, Tim, you got it made now. You, you know, you work at the school and you got it made now. I said, brother, let me go back. You got to go back. Okay. When I used to ride back and forth to Kansas City for 50 bucks, you know, 
I mean, I remember that time, but it paid the bills. See, I paid my dues. I've already been there. You know, I understand. I never forget those days. Those days we call hungry days when you still sought God. And sometimes we still got to keep that hunger where we're always seeking God and never forget that, hey, hallelujah, God, I want more of you. I want more of you. You know, I, I, I want my cup to be filled up. You know, people say, people say, yeah, people say, uh, you know, for uh, half full or, you know, half empty, how you look at us, well, that don't make any sense, either one of those. How can you can fill a cup up again and again and again and again and again, right? You can keep filling it up. You can keep filling it up. That's what God wants to do with us. He wants to keep filling us up. He wants us to be more like him. When the disciples, when the disciples had spent time with Jesus, people noticed they had spent time with him. There was something different. When Moses was up on the mountain, his face glowed so much, he thought they had to put a veil on him because he spent that time. When you meet people that are really sold out to God, there's something different about it. There's something different. You know, they don't get lost in all this worldly stuff. You know, they don't get off in all this stuff. How is your relationship with God? I remember one time, it's going through a, a rough patch. We all, we all do that in our life. And man, I'm thinking, you know, things are just all backwards in my life, you know, and, and all this stuff. And I, I stayed at a hotel up here. And this, it, this kid, he looks like he's about 12 years old. And, and we was walking across the hall. And, 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 you know, he nodded at me. You know, and, and uh, I just said, how you doing? He said these, I'm blessed. There's something about that. Look, he's looking like about 12. He said, I'm blessed. He didn't hesitate. You know how some people look, well, you know, I'm trying to make it. I'm trying. No, he said, I'm blessed. That got in me. I'm blessed. He's only like 12 years old. Man, I got to stop thinking about all this negative stuff and realize what positive things I have in my life. You know, one person said this way. He said, you know, we got to stop thinking about what people did to us. We need to start thinking about what God did for us. That's what we need to start looking at. Hallelujah. Yeah, my brother, he said this, Tim. I, I, I wrote it down. He said, either to bury the past or the past will bury you. That's what's going to happen. You know, some of us won't move to God because he's worried about the past. We're worried about what other people think. All you need to be worried about what God thinks. That's the only thing that matters. You know, we worried about, oh, I don't know if I do this. I might look silly. You know, I, I'm refined. I remember, and I, sh I shared this before, but that told me something. I was out of church in the East, and, and, and I'll tell you what, you know, they, they didn't. I, 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 when I feel God, I got to say something. I got to say something. I'm going to get up and shout. I'm going to get up and raise. But they wouldn't do it. You know, they said, you know, understand, we're refined, church. We're refined. We don't do that stuff here, Jim. We do this. Yes, yeah. I said, what is this? What is this? What? That's not even a clap to me. This little thing. I said, uh, you know, and I raised my hand. Oh, you can't you got, put your hands down. It looked like somebody was sticking me up in the back. And I'm up and raising my hand. What's wrong with you back there? What's wrong? I said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm not ashamed of who I belong to. I'm not ashamed, but I'm going to shout. Y'all might throw me out of church, but I'm going to shout in the parking lot. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. You know, it's time for the church to get serious about who they believe in. You know, it's time for them to say, hey, hallelujah. Tell you what, God is still God. And his name is above every name, right? His name is above pandemic. His name is above heartache. His name is above worry. His name is above strife. His name is above poverty. Hallelujah. Come on, folks. Come on. That's what it's about. Hallelujah. We're here to praise him. I tell you what. You know, I, I just love God. And the more, the more I serve him, the more I realize he's just there for me more and more every day. You know, one thing about it, he promised to never leave you or forsake him. Some of your friends, I don't know, once you mess up with them, they're gone. They don't want nothing to do with you. They won't call you on the phone. Well, you did this to me 20 years ago. I said, you know, get over stuff. You got to learn to get over stuff. People do stupid things. I was down in Nacogdoches, Texas, and, and I was driving my big truck, and we was going north, and they had the lane narrowed down. So we got on CB, and everybody turned right, the big trucks. There was a cattle yard coming, and he could make a right. Well, a certain individual who I won't name, wasn't me, but a certain individual, decided not to take the advice. Okay? And I'm telling you, when I saw the big truck drive on the sidewalk, you know, with the name on the side of his trailer, knocking the no parking signs over, and knocking all that and rutting the grass, I'm thinking, you know what? We did not make a good decision there, did we? Okay? Now, I'm not going to hold that. If I see that guy, and that was years ago, he said, you was that guy that knocked it over. Well, you know, Tim, that was a long time ago. 
I've grown from that. We got to let people grow from their mistakes. We got to let them mature. You know, one thing about, that I love about God, he doesn't throw your past back at you. He doesn't do that. <clears throat> when you ask God to forgive you, he forgives you. Amen. He casts in a sea of forgiveness. He doesn't throw it in your face. He doesn't. So what, you ran out of curse. So you did this. Okay, did you learn from it? That's the thing. Did you learn? Did you grow from it? That's what God wants you to do. Like the children of Israel, we look at them and say, oh, I don't know. You know, they, they seem like they weren't very smart. and They kept doing the same thing over. I said, no, we're not, it's not even, you know, we look at them as, as back in the past. I tell you, they're human beings too. You know, because you think about it. They came across the Red Sea. Can you imagine that? I'm sure as they went across the Red Sea, God opened it. They touched it, you know, touched the water. And they went across on dry land. They brought everybody, the cattle, everything went across in dry land. That to me is so amazing. They went across on dry land. So they get on the other side and the Egyptians come and say, you'll see the Egyptians no more. And the water came in, you know, and wiped them all out. And boy, they're marrying the going to horse and ride it on the sea. They're all happy, you know. Oh, man, look what God did. And it wasn't very long. They couldn't find water. Wasn't very long after that. And Mar, they couldn't find no water. And now they're crying them up. You brought us out here to die of thirst. What's wrong? Wait, 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 wait. The God that opened the Red Sea is still the God on that side. Yes. You think he's going to bring you out and not have no water or not supply for you? That's why we tend to forget what God has done for us. We forget so often. You know, that's why I write stuff in my Bible so I turn that page I can remember when God did that for me. Yes. I can remember when I tell you what, when I didn't have any food to eat. I remember those days. I remember how it feels to be homeless and not have a plan. I remember those days. And you know what? I never forget them. I said, thank you, God, for bringing me out of that point. I'm never going to forget what you've done for me. I tell you what, it's good to keep a diary and real, realize where you came from. When, when, when people said, well, you'll never amount to anything, I said, that's your opinion. That's your opinion. But I serve a God, hallelujah, that can make something out of nothing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I serve a God that can meet her at that well and say, hey, hey, wait a minute. There's a change coming. There's a change coming. Hallelujah. Oh, Father God. Hallelujah. Oh, I love it. I love it. And verse 24, God is a, spirit, a spiritual being. Those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth, in reality. The woman said to him, I know. Hallelujah. There's something going. I know that the Messiah is coming. He who is called the Christ, the anointed one, when he arrives, he would tell us everything we need to know and make it clear to us. Hallelujah. That tells me right there she was thinking about the Messiah. Yeah. How would that come out of her mouth? She hadn't been, I know he's going to come. You think every time she walked out there and nobody's around, oh, God, I wish my life would change. There's got to be something more. I can't just keep going through husbands. I can't do that. I want something that's going to last forever. I need a change inside. Hallelujah. But she said, I know that the Messiah is coming. I'm looking forward to him because I want an eternal change. I want something so I don't keep making the same mistakes over and over. I want a change inside of me. Hallelujah. He is called the Christ, the anointed one. When he arrives, he will tell us everything we need to know and make it clear to us. God makes a pathway clear. It's, it's not something that's cloudy. It's clear. It's one Savior. Hallelujah. That went on the altar. Hallelujah. Once and for all. Hallelujah. The high priest that he paid our price for us. Hallelujah. He paid it once and for all. He's not going to sacrifice again if you don't want to accept him. He made the way for you to be reconciled back to the Father. And I love what Jesus said to her. Hallelujah. I who now speak with you, am he. Boy, I tell you what, that shake you up. I'm the one you're looking for right here. I'm the one. Hallelujah. And I'm, she just like, wow, wow. And then anyhow, yeah, now you got disciples that went away to buy food. Now they're coming back. Verse 20, just, Jesus, just then his disciples came and they wondered, were surprised and astonished him, find him talking with a woman, a married woman. However, not of them, not one of them asked him, what are you inquiring about or why did you want, what do you want or why do you speak with her? Okay, and they're looking at the natural and in one sense you don't talk. Well, Jesus is up there talking to this woman, something's not right, but they didn't get it. They didn't get it yet. Look what happened, verse 28. The woman left her water jar and went into the town and she began telling the people. 
Hallelujah. That's evangelism. That's evangelism right there. Tell them what God has done. This is the one. That's the best thing you can do is to point them to Jesus Christ. You know, we got Roman road maps and all that. I'm telling you, hey, this is the man that told me everything I ever did. This is the man that changed my life. That's a testimony. People can argue. They can argue this doctrine, that doctrine, but they can't argue what God done for you. Because you know that. They can't argue that. Hallelujah. I know. Hey, I was blind, but now I see. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about, a change. I tell you what, I know what happened. I had an individual, and we was, was talking about Jesus. And, you know, Tim, I, my grandma raised me, but she talks too much about Jesus. She talks too much. She believes too much. And I, I, You know, sometimes you can't just quiet. You got to say something. I said, how can you get too much? You can't get too much because the more you get in, there's more and more and more. You can't get too much. She doesn't believe too much. I, God bless her. God bless her that she wants to keep getting full up with Christ every day. I think that's a great thing, thing, thing to do. I love it. And look what he said. Come see a man who has told me everything I ever did. He pinpointed the five husbands. Hallelujah. He pinpointed it right there. Hallelujah. God is good. And the one I'm living with is not my husband. Can this be? Oh, hallelujah. Can this be? Is not this the Christ? Hallelujah. Must not this be the Messiah and the anointed one? So the people left the town and set out to go for him. Isn't that something? That, that lady that was met. Again, the needs was met. He must needs go at that point in time to start a revival. That's why you can have somebody just say, you know, I've been thinking about you, brother, and call you out. Of, well, I say, well, well, why'd you call me, brother? Because God put you on my heart to pray for. I've been praying for you for weeks. How's things going? Well, you know, I, I was just thinking I, I, I'd like to go to church. Well, his needs right there. He needs to go to that person's house. Everybody needs Jesus. Everybody needs him to come in a full way in their life. I'm telling you, some people will not share what's going on in their life. They won't do that. You know, they they got pride or I don't want to burden. No, but I tell you, if you can get down. I remember talking to a counselor once and she said, Tim, the only way to get healed from all the past is you got to get down to a gut level. You got to get down, as they say, where the rubber meets the road. We got to get down to the real issues. You know, when you talk to people, you know, say, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing fine. Good weather today. You know, you know, they'll, they'll talk in the service. But how are you really doing? I had a guy tell me, how are you really doing? Can, can we go over coffee sometime? And, and if they feel comfortable as they open up, maybe a little at the beginning. But boy, if you can get down to that gut level. You know, I'm worried about my son. They, he's out here running around. I really wish God would tell, well, we're going to pray that. We're going to pray that way. We're going to pray that God reach your son. We're going to pray that together. I remember years ago, there was a lady at Kingsway. Her name was Leafy Blair. And I wanted to get a job that um, I could make money and didn't have to work two or three different jobs and just drive. And they said, Tim, you got to talk to Leafy Blair. That's the only thing she did in the church was pray. And I said, you show me her, show me who she is. And he took it up. And she was real tall and skinny and she had bluish gray hair, big eyes, you know, she's real tall. And she looked at me and says, the lady introduced me to her, this is Leafy Blair. And, and I told her my name, so glad to meet you. And she said, son, how can I pray for you? You want me to pray for you? I said, yes, ma'am. And she said, well, let's pray right now. I'm not gonna wait till I get home. I love that, I'm gonna pray for you right now. And so she reached out your hand. I'm telling you, that woman, she's probably 75 years old. Man, she grabbed my hand so tight. Man, I thought, we were going to hear some bones crack here pretty soon. You know? <laughs> she was grabbing that, and she started praying. I wanted to get a job that, uh, that I would have to work two or three jobs. Like, and she grabbed it and said, let's go to heaven right now. Let's talk to God right now. And she prayed. And that was clear back in 1982. And ever since she prayed, I've never been out of work. Not one day. I've never been out of a job. I've always had a job. You know, because she understood. Let's pray right now. If somebody, sometimes we put it off, they say, brother, will you pay for so-and-so? Let's do it right now. Let's go to God right now. That's what I love about God. You know, he, he is not irritated when you go to him. He don't have visiting out. Some people do. You know, they say, well, you know, hey, hey, brother, you know, I, I know you're going through some things. You can call me anytime, you know, as long as it's between 8 and 5, you know, or 8 and 7. Yeah, don't call me no 9, 10 o'clock at night. 
I had a cousin, I hadn't seen him for a while, and that's what happened. You know, he, he, we got talking, he says, you know, James, you want prayer? I'd be glad to pray for you. Three o'clock in the morning, he called. I said, uh, he says, Tim, little voice on there. I said, yeah, what are you doing? Well, I was trying to sleep. <laughs> that, that was my goal tonight. Yeah, well, I just wanted to call and see how you're doing. You know, you said call you any time. You know? <laughs> well, I, after that, I, I, <laughs> I understand. You know, I, I, I was gracious to him. But, you know, some people would call you that time. But it don't always work. But be available because you never know the cry of their heart. You never know where they're at. Sometimes they need, that's their last call, that last reach out. I'm telling what, my nephew that um, we ended up burying a few months back, we have been talking about the last year a lot more, see how he was doing. And then that day when all that broke loose and he ended up doing what he's doing, and I start getting messages, and it just, it just tears your heart out. Because he really didn't like, I tried to get him down, you know, he, this. But in that last month or so, two months, he just didn't like, the, everything was surface. Everything was surface, you know. And I thought, man, if, 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 if a call could have been made or something could have been done different, you know, he, he did know the Lord. He just made a bad decision, okay. And, and I, I thought about that and I said, you know what? When you feel that somebody is at that point, well, they just need a hand, we got to go to it. Yeah. No matter what it costs, you know, to go to them and say, you know, there's always an answer. The answer is always Jesus Christ. I don't care where you're going. You know, people say, you know, oh, Tim, I don't know which way to go. Jesus made it plain. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. That tells me there's only one way, there's only one truth, and there's only one life. And it's found in Christ. That's the only way. Nothing is going to satisfy. It will not. Your relationships won't. Money won't. Houses won't. Hallelujah. None of it's going to satisfy. We got to get to where God's the only one to satisfy. You know, all this economy and, you know, some people losing jobs and all this. I said, I tell you what, my job is going to come from God. Because he can open a door that we didn't even think about opening. You know, he, he can turn things around. That's what we always got to realize. God will always come through for it. It may not be the way that you think he's going to come through. See, that, that's where we get another issue that we want God to do it a certain way. You know, well, I, God, I thought you'd do this instead of this. I said, let me handle that. I know what's best for you. Just trust me. I see that from Genesis to Revelation. He just wants his people to believe him. I see that so often. If we just would believe God, that would take care of a lot of our issues. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Folks, it's all about that, isn't it? It's all about when she went and she told them, verse 20, I, I love it, come see a man. That's the best thing you can do for people. Invite them to church. You know, I, that's how I end up getting my life right with God. My, I, my cousin just invited me to church and I went. And things changed that night. Just invite him to church. He didn't go over a lot of scripture and stuff. Just come. There's a man. There's a man, Jesus Christ, that will change everything for you. Just come. Just come. Because, you know, uh, Reverend Butler, he, when I grew up, he was a pastor of our church. And almost every single day we was at church, he had an altar call. He always wore a robe. And, and, and he'd stand right in front. Will you come? Will you come? Would you surrender your life? And he, he'd hold it open. And one day I remember thinking, man, you know, I... You know, you get that pull. You get that pull. And you know it's your day to go. And, and I remember getting up by the pew and walking to him. And he, he'd always give you a big hug. And, you know, and he'd talk to you. And I thought, you know what? You know, got our kids over here and adults. And I thought, you know what? It doesn't matter what the congregation thinks in that sense. Well, I can't believe he's going up there. I can't believe. No. You know what? The good, honest congregation is happy for you when you walk that road. They're happy for you that you make a change. They're happy for you that now you want Jesus in your life. Sometimes we get off in that pettiness and stuff. We got to get away from that. Our goal is Jesus Christ. Our goal is to look to the hills from whence cometh our help. Hallelujah. Oh, folks, God is good. God is so good. You know, we, we serve a mighty God. The one thing I, I, I like how God does it, and Psalm 96, 4, English Standard Version, for great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. 
2 Samuel 22, 4, English Standard Version, I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Oh, and I am saved from my enemies. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Think about Jeremiah 31, 3. Christian Standard Bible says, The Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved thee with an, I love you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued to extend faithful love to you. God will not cut that off. He just keeps bearing with you, bearing with you, bearing with you, and bearing with you. Hallelujah. Oftentimes I get asked, hey, Tim, hey, Tim, does God give a second chance? I love that question. I say no. He doesn't give a second because he doesn't stop at two. If he stopped at two, we'd be all be goners. He gives you third, fourth, fifth, see, he just keeps going out. He don't stop there because he wants you. He wants you in the kingdom. It doesn't get God's satisfaction if somebody ends up in hell. That's not a satisfaction for God. He wants to be saved. He wants to be turned around. Hallelujah. Everlasting. Oh, everlasting love. Lasting forever or a very long time. Synonym. Ceaseless. Endless. Eternal. Immortal. Permanent. Perpetual. Undying. Unending. That's the way God's love is. It will never end. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God. We serve a mighty God. Hallelujah. And Philippians 2 9 says, Wherefore God also have highly exalted him and given him a name which above every name. It's above every name. So I tell you what, we got to get that in our side. So it's above trouble. It's above worry. It's above strife. It's above every name. Jesus' name. We got to really get that down in the heart. Oh, hallelujah. God is so good, folks. God is so good. Oh, I, I love it. God is good. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Uh, Aiden Wilson Tozer said, God is trying to call us back to that for which he created us, to worship him and to enjoy him forever. Yeah. Do you enjoy God today? Do you enjoy spending time with him? Even when there's hard times, do you still go to God? That's what God wants to. Hallelujah. Lamar Boschman said, when I worship, I would, would rather my heart be without words than my, ver than my words be without heart. That you give it to, I love it. When I worship, I would rather my heart be without words than my words be without heart. That you get, have you given your all to God? Have you say, I surrender. Hallelujah. Oh, folks, we should sing that song, Soul Say Yes. When I was in church, Soul Say Yes. I remember preaching one time, singing a song, Have Thine Own Way. Have Thine Own Way. I love that song. I remember he pointed out there, said, don't sing that song unless you mean it. That you totally mean it. Have thine own way, Lord. That you really mean it. Whatever it takes, God, have thine own way. Like Job said, I know my Redeemer liveth. There's got to come to a point where God is the most important in your whole life. Apart more than anything, that's what we got to come to. Because I tell you, you think about this. You think about Daniel and the lion's den. Because, they, you know, they kind of tricked him in there and he, you prayed. We know the story. But he was thrown in the lion's den. You don't hear Daniel complaining. Oh, man, you know, this is not going to end well. No, he just went out there and prayed. And God shut the lion's mouth. He shut the lion's mouth. All right? And those that accuse him, we know what happened to them. Because, you know, I hear commentary, well, the lions must not have been hungry when Daniel was down there. You ever seen a lion? They get hungry, let me tell you. Down there when they had the Blank Park Zoo, and they had the lions in a different section, and right beside them was the monkeys, the gibbons, you know, with the long, skinny arms. And they was up against that fence, and they was trying to torment them lions on the other side. And I'm thinking, brother, if that fence breaks down, <laughs> if this breaks down, I know who's going to be for lunch, you know. You know, but the lion was over there eating. He was over eating some. Otherwise, you might be lunch. And, you know, you think about that. And then, but once Daniel came out, he said, don't worry, O king. God has shut the lion's mouth. Okay. And he threw all those accusers. Before they got down to the bottom, the lion chewed them up. Okay. Same way. Go back. You know, uh, uh, Meshach, Bednego, and that group, the three go in the furnace. I like the way they took a stand. You know, Nebuchadnezzar builds this big statue. We know the story. And when I blow the trumpets, you got to bow down. Wait, wait. Everybody's bow down except three. 
It's them Hebrew boys. It's the ones that they don't, they don't even listen to you, king. Bring them here. Hey, did y'all not understand when they blow the sack pot in the heart, y'all supposed to bow down to the image. Y'all supposed to bow down. And I love their response. You know, they didn't get irritated. Oh, king, we don't need to answer you. We don't need to answer you, okay? If God delivers us, that's fine. If he doesn't, but we're still not going to bow down to your God. I love that. They didn't get mad at him. Boy, Nebuchadnezzar was mad. Heat the furnace up seven times. Seven times more. Throw him in there. Bound him up, and he threw him in there. I like what it said. When he threw him in there, the ones threw him in there, God slew all them that threw him in there because they touched God's anointing. And they got all got, got killed, right? Now, they're in the furnace, and I like what Nebuchadnezzar comes. Wait, you know, he looks, wait, he looks in, wait a minute. Hey, I thought we threw three in there. I thought we'd do three in there. Now one looks like a son of God. And they're all walking around. They're, they're loose. Their bounds are gone. I, I love that. Okay, Because God went with them in the furnace. Sometimes we like to be delivered on outside the furnace. But what was the greatest ter- t- greater testimony? Inside the furnace. And sometimes we have to go there, folks. That's just the reality. you know. But God will be in there with you. And I mean, look, at, wait, there's four in there, like a son of God, and they're walking around. Bring them out. And I tell you what, not, no, no smoke, nothing was burned on them. And no God can deliver out their sword. No God. God, sometimes we get in those situations that you have to look up and you know it was God. There's no other way to deliver you from that. No other way. And God, sometimes we put in those positions so you know it's him and you can't give glory to anybody else. That you know it was God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, folks, we're going to always remember what God has done for you. Always remember all the blessings he gives you in the past, all the blessings he gives you now, and the ones that's coming in the future. And know it's God. I've seen him so many times. I was just thinking the other day I had a, a Mazda GLC, one of the first cars I bought. And I remember driving down the road, and, and this little fiberglass underneath there, dead in the sound, it broke loose and it was just rattling something. So I was going to stop and try to tie it up till I got home. I can take it off. Now I'm, I'm thinking it was a two lane road. I could have stopped at any point on that two lane road, right? And pull over. Isn't it interesting? Where I stopped at that very spot, guess what? There, there was about a three foot length of rope at that spot. Just at that very spot. Well, Tim, you know, that's just coincidence, you know. I said, no, I, 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 I didn't know. I don't know who lost it or where, but it was right at the very spot I stopped at. And that got me home. That's how God does things. That's how he does things. That's why my life verse is this. David said, I was young, but now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken or a seed begging bread. I've seen God come through when you think there is no way. I've seen him come through that turn a person's life around because that's what he is. That's what God does. He's about the life-changing business. He's about the miracle business. The Bible says, for with God, all things are possible. Not some things, not a few things, all things. Is there anything too hard for God? There's nothing too hard for God. I tell you what, he can turn a situation that you've been stewing with for years, he can turn around overnight when you give it to him. You know, he, he can bless you in ways that you can't even imagine, you know, because God is God. And we got to never lose that fact, folks, that God is still God no matter what happens in your life. The thing that we tend to do sometimes when things are going wrong, we, we start that doubting in our head. Well, is God going to come through? Is he going to, what, has he ever failed you yet? We failed God. I failed God a million times, but God has never failed me once. Even when I didn't do something right, God still came through. That's what it's about. That's what it's about. When those times are heartbreaking, you know what I remember? God heals a broken heart. When I ain't healing, God heals you. I am the God that healeth thee. That's what we got to do. Get this word inside of you and declare God's word. If he says I'm healed, guess what? I'm healed. You know, if he says, I'm not going to live in poverty, I'm not going to live in poverty. You know, all these things where he said his riches in Christ's glory. Paul understood one thing. Oh, to know him. That's what makes a difference. To know him. To get down on that level and cry out to God. He wants to hear from you. He loves you, folks. And, and Lord, and, and as we look at this section of scripture and realize that Samaritan woman 
was changed from that day forth. She was changed all because he must needs go through Samaria. Don't forget that he needs to go through your life. He understands exactly where you're at. And he will never, ever forsake you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good, folks. Let us never forget, you know, in the beginning, God. I love the way, you know, Moses was reading the first few books of the Bible. But in the beginning, God. I love that, that it started in the beginning, God. It didn't start once upon a time. It started in the beginning, God. That's where it is. And Jesus said in Revelations, I am the beginning and the ending. Boy, I tell you what, that's like a bookend. So if I keep my life in here, I'll come out all right. Right? That's what we got to look at. Hallelujah. We serve a mighty God, folks. Hallelujah. Oh, God is good. Oh, God is good, folks. Hallelujah. Well, I just want to say that take God with you. And remember, great is he that is in you than he that is in the world. God can take care of every situation. We got to let go. Let God handle it. Because he wants to. He wants to be part of your life. Why in the Garden of Eden and Adam and Eve, he came in the cool of the day. He talked with them. Can you imagine that spending time? I'm always amazed that God wants to hear from us. I'm, I'm just amazed that I can go to him 24 hours, seven days a week. I can go. I'm not irritated. When Jesus was sleeping in the boat and the storm was raging and they woke him up. And, and you know, and, it's, and Jesus said, y'all could do the same thing. He rebuked the wind. But he never was irritated that they woke him up. There's nothing said about that. He said, if you had the faith, you could have done the same thing. If you could have spoke to that storm, he'd been calm too. That's what we want, to have that faith that we can speak to that mountain and it be gone. And that's where God wants us, to go get, speak his word. Speak the positive part in his word. Even though Satan likes to come with doubts and all that stuff, we can cast them out. We don't need that because I can keep the word. I hid the word in my heart that I might not sin against you. I hid that word, Lord, that that word makes a difference. Once I get it on inside of me, oh, it looks like you're never going to be healed. Wait a minute. Jesus said I am healed. Hallelujah. I look like, oh, man, your life was just, just total ashes ruined. Hey, wait a minute. Jesus said, I can give you beauty for ashes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I can set the captives free. And it all goes back to him. Folks, Jesus Christ is still Lord no matter what. Hallelujah. Oh, Father God, we just want to thank you today that we've been able to be part of this congregation. We want to thank you that it's all about you. Yes, send that fire. Change our lives, Lord, that we can get even more and more excited about the cause of Jesus Christ. Is there not a cause? Is there not a bomb in Gilead? We're here to surrender our lives and say, use me. Hallelujah. Send me, send me, send me. We are willing to go in the highways and byways and compel them to come in. Because, Father God, we cannot make it without you. Oh, Father God, that you would touch everybody in here that has need of touching, Lord, whether it's healing or their families or financial blessing, emotional blessing, whatever they may need. God, let us realize, like the Samaritan woman, hey, here he is. He's the Messiah. He's the Messiah. He's the one we've been looking for. Let us look for you every day. And Lord, we thank you for, for coming into our heart and living in our heart. Father God, that, Lord, keep us on the right path always, Lord. Oh, Father God, we want to write. There's a narrow way following God. Let us stay on that narrow way. Let us realize where we came from. Father God, at one point we was lost and undone. But hallelujah, you came in and said, yes, now you're my child. Now you belong to the kingdom of God. Now, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, that I'm going to send you out. The Bible said, for with God, all things are possible. For with God, hallelujah. For with God, hallelujah. He was working with them. Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Let us never forget, God. Let us always realize that you have called us to such a time as this. Into the kingdom to such a time as this. Father God. We lift you up. We praise you. The Bible said, if you be lifted up, draw all men unto you. 
that you are beautiful for situation. You are beautiful for elevation. Father God, and we're going to thank you for the good report because you will come through again and again and again. That all we can do for the rest of our life is acknowledge that you are Lord. So we want to give you the praise today. We're going to give you the glory today. In your wonderful holy name, we pray amen and amen. God is good, folks. Hallelujah. Let's take that with you today. God is good, and God is on your side. So you are dismissed. God is good, folks. Thanks for being here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.